Hi, and thanks for joining me today while we talk about strategies to keep your voice healthy and supple when you are dealing with stenosis or you've just had a surgery where you have had a dilation um, or a laryngoscopy, bronchoscopy, and your voice is a little hoarse and a little inflamed. So first of all, I want to say that I am someone who has idiopathic subglottic stenosis as diagnosed about two and a half years ago. And this is something that I'm dealing with directly also as a professional singer and a vocal co coach. So I want you to know that I relate because I am living this disease just like you if you have stenosis. Second of all, I want to say that I am a vocal coach who teaches singing, not a voice therapist. So if you have a vocal disorder that was caused by a resection, something like that, you really should be working with a voice therapist, a speech language pathologist who specializes in voice therapy. Your ENT can recommend someone and it should be covered by insurance. That's if you have a disorder. If you're just dealing with some hoarseness, some mucus issues, let's talk about that. That's what we're gonna work on today. So the first thing that we can do to keep our voices healthy is to minimize how much we cough and clear our throats. Any ENT and any singing teacher will tell you it's so bad for your voice to cough and clear your throat. But how can we not do it? We're suffocating if we've got stuff in there. So obviously you're gonna have to do it a little bit, but the less the better. Number one, Good old fashioned hydrate. Anytime you particularly have that urge to cough, resist and drink some water or some tea, throat coat tea is a great one, herbal teas, various herbal teas, um, warm water with honey and lemon. And some people in the stenosis community swear by pineapple juice. So any of those things, drink up. Number two is the nebulizer. This has been a game changer for me. I just started using this in the last month and it really, really helps soothe the airway and make those coughs productive. Try to get something portable like this so that you can keep it handy. The thing you can try is the neti pot. This is a Neil Med sinus rinse. It's basically the same concept and it's a little easier to use. You can use this in the morning and at nighttime or whenever you need it, it helps clear out drainage up here in your sinuses. So yes, we have it here, but in some cases it might be coming from here, especially if you have allergies, which I do. So that doesn't help at all. So this is a nice way to help clear out some drainage that's starting here so that it doesn't even get here. You can also use Mucinex. Um, I didn't notice a difference with Mucinex until I started using 1200 milligrams twice a day. There are also different supplements. Some pe people say that NAC is useful. Um, I'm trying a couple different homeopathic and supplement, some herbal supplement um, options right now. And if they are effective, I will let you know. And then one other technique for dealing with mucus is the huffing technique for breathing. So what you do is you breathe in slowly and then you go like that. And then you try it again two times. Breathe in and that can clear your passageway. Um, if it doesn't work in two times, take a few normal breaths and then try it again. I know that it works for some people and it's much easier on your voice. Now, speaking of breathing, if you have ever taken singing lessons or yoga, you know the importance of breathing low or breathing from your belly. Try a little experiment. Go to a mirror real fast. Take a big breath in and exhale and watch yourself. When you took your big breath in, did your shoulders rise like this? If you did, you're taking a shallow breath if you're taking shallow breaths, you're not maximizing your lung capacity. You're probably getting lightheaded easily 
and have that much less breath to carry your sentences and singing on. We need every ounce of lung capacity we can get. So it's important to learn how to breathe low. So let's do this. Imagine that your body is a balloon. You are the balloon. And then imagine when you take a breath in that someone is blowing air into you as the balloon. So I'm gonna use my COVID extra pounds here. It's helpful in this case because you can really see how your stomach should look when you're breathing low. Okay, so here we go. When you breathe in, the balloon expands. And when you exhale, when you breathe out, your navel goes in towards your spine and your tummy comes in. Let's try that again. So breathing in, think of expanding that balloon. And when we exhale, let's do it on a hiss this time. That balloon shrinks up again. So that's how to take belly breaths or low breaths. Um, when people first learn this concept, they want to do it the opposite way. The way I just showed you is the way it should be. When you breathe in, you fill up your lungs, which pushes the diaphragm down, which expands your stomach. Okay, so real quick, I, I, I did that last breath on a hiss, and that's a great exercise for practicing low breathing. Okay, so three to four counts, breathing in, making sure your shoulders don't come up. And now we're gonna hiss for 12 counts. And now part three, which is dealing with hoarseness or uh, weakness in your voice. Um, this is especially common after surgery, after a dilation, a bronchoscopy or laryngoscopy or all three of those things. So number one, drink lots and lots of fluids, water, herbal teas, warm water with lemon and honey, throat coat tea, as I mentioned earlier. Two, Gargle with warm salt water that's very soothing on inflamed vocal cords. Three, you can steam your vocal cords. So you can buy a personal steamer, which kind of goes right here, but um, you can also just have to do this one very cautiously, but you can boil a pot of water, turn off, turn on it off so it's not boiling anymore. Then put a towel over your head, lean over the pot and breathe in that warm steam. And now I'm gonna show you some vocal exercises to do while you have a hoarse voice and you're trying to regain your voice. And I specifically waited to do this video until I had just finished my most recent surgery, partly so that I could get through my sentences without gasping <laughs> in this video, but also because I wanted to have a hoarse voice so that I could demonstrate maybe some of the sensations that you're feeling and tell you how to navigate around that. Most of the exercises we're gonna do are called semi-occluded vocal tract exercises. And these partially block the airflow through the cords. This relaxes the larynx, eliminates strain, and helps balance air pressure. So th those are the winning reasons to do these kinds of exercises when you're dealing with hoarseness or a tired voice or a weak voice. So to begin with, lip buzzes. These are one of the best vocal exercises for anything, hoarseness or not. So we're just gonna do a slide through your range from a low note to a high note and back down again while we're buzzing our lips, going brrrr. So sometimes it's helpful if you have a difficult time making this sound to just push a little bit inward with your cheeks to give yourself kind of those fish lips gentle though okay so you're going to take a slow low breath in and you're just going to slide low to high and back down and 
you're going for nice smooth transitions from your low notes to high notes. I had a couple breaks in there. That's because I'm hoarse and that's okay. That's part of the process. Let's try this one again. Breathing in. <laughs> So I am missing some of my low range and some of my high range, but my voice is working with what it has right now. And those slides doing that lip buzz are helping it find its way back. Next, we're gonna do some ng slides. So when, like say something that ends with an NG, something. So we're just gonna take the NG sound mm, and we're gonna slide and we're gonna slide so it's gonna be mm, mm, mm. Try it here. Mm. Just do a few of these. Again, you can hear those little cracks in my voice. I want to show you that this is normal. I am four days post-surgery, so these are normal sensations. At this point, it might take up to a month for your voice to get fully back to normal. We'll just do a few more. going up the scale. I'm just taking it really easy right now because I know that my voice is getting tired fast so I want to give it a little bit of warmth and a little bit of exercise but I don't want to push it. Okay if that one's a little bit hard for you you can take the interval that your voice is sliding to a, a smaller degree. That was a five to one, five notes. Um, we could just do three notes. going to add this thing that I've been waving around in my hand for a few minutes. We're going to do a straw slide. So the same exercise, but this time we're going to be singing like ooh or o oh, through this through the straw. So I'm going to go back to the five note. So it's ooh. Lots of wobbling there. Just going for a nice smooth tone, not trying to push it too hard. Just keeping a steady airflow. That one felt better. I don't know if it sounded better. Okay, and we can keep going up from there with the straw. Another excellent low pressure activity for your voice. For the last exercise, we can just do some more slides with our voice. And again, as low as you can to as high as you can without pushing or doing anything crazy. Now, if I were to sing a little something, let's see. Cause it's been a long time, don't know why we should wait anymore. 
Take me by my hand, let's demand all that we've been waiting for. I just want to feel good. <laughs> yeah. So right there when I popped into my head, voice was like, whoa. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little gentle singing in my head voice. I just want to feel good. I just want to feel happy. Come on and make me feel good. So I'm dealing with some very squeaky notes up there, but I'm just singing a little bit, a few minutes, and that's it. That's it. I'm done for the day. So the last few comments I can tell you is remember to give yourself vocal rest if your voice is hoarse. You must have some quiet time during the day, not only while you're sleeping, but while you're awake, where you can just be totally quiet with your voice. Then the last comment is to give it time. You may need some time for your voice to heal, and that can be a slow process. Keep drinking lots of fluids, not pushing your voice, doing five to 10 minutes of vocal exercises a day, and you should be hearing improvements slowly but surely until your voice is back in top shape. I hope this is helpful. I hope you get lots of time between dilations and here's hoping for a cure someday so that this video is just obsolete. Thanks for joining me. Yo, S -C -E.